Hello folks in uh, EDRE 733. Uh, my name is Chris Guter. I am the education librarian here at Alden Library and I'm just going to very quickly here kind of go through our new website and make sure you are familiar with how to get to some of the resources you might need for uh, Dr. Howley's 733 class. Um, first off, let me see if I can find my information here so you have a name and a face. If I, I'm on the library homepage, by the way, which is www.library.ohiou.edu. Um, looking for about staff directory. Um, let's go here. If I can get it to work. We have just changed the website this summer as well, so uh, I may be running into some difficulties here now and then finding what I'm looking for. But, and here I am. Okay, uh, so my name is Chris. My email is guder at ohio.edu. My phone number right here. I, I'd probably recommend emailing over calling just because I forget to check my phone, but my email actually does go to my phone, so I'll be able to get in touch with you quicker that way. Uh, if you live off campus, which I think most of you probably do, we may have to do this over email more often than not. But if you would, uh, do find yourself on campus, we can always schedule an hour uh, to sit down and go through some literature searches and see what we can come up with. Okay, um, get back to the library homepage here. Most of what I'm going to talk about today can be found in what we call LibGuides, LibGuides. So if you're back on the library homepage, click on Subject and Course Guides, and then Browse by Subject. In a lot of ways, these are sort of like cheat sheets. So each librarian has created these uh, little web pages, I guess, that give you resources that are pertinent to your area. What I'm doing is I'm just scrolling down to Education. With the change of the website, I have to go through all of these and change a lot of the links. And right now, the only one that is reasonably close to being done is the Education, Research, and Evaluation LibGuide. So that's the one we're going to be using. But because of the multidisciplinary research that goes on in education, you may have to jump to different guides outside of education. So if you have a health topic, you might need to go to one of the medicine uh, or health sciences libguides. If you have some sort of a business connection uh, to that, you might want to go to one of uh, the business libguides. I'm just going to be focusing on the education here, but again, uh, because of the multidisciplinary aspect of a lot of your research, you may have to jump, and I could, for example, communication studies, uh, a little bit higher up here, business. There are a lot of different business libguides here that you could jump into and find databases other than education databases. But again, I'm going to scroll back down here to education and click on educational research and evaluation. All of these libguides, all of mine anyway, uh, look about the same. They just have different resources underneath these tabs at the top here. On the left, we have a feed so all the latest materials that I've ordered and have, that have shown up in the library about educational research would be here. And you could, in theory, click on that and find the record. So a student's guide to methodology, uh, copyright 2012, is on the sixth floor. Uh, there's the call number. It's actually checked out at the moment. Uh, but most of you are probably, well, possibly familiar with OhioLink. If you click on this button over here on the right, uh, you'll find out that really only two copies are in the state of Ohio, and one of them is non-circulating, and the other is checked out. So that's not a great example. But a lot of times when you come into our database, which is called Alice, up here in the left-hand corner, uh, these books will be checked out. But if you repeat your search on Ohio Link, you'll be able to look through other campuses in the state of Ohio. And if they have one, you can just use your Ohio ID and password to check one out and have it sent to a campus that's close to you. Okay, there's a little. Um, but then back up here on the library, on the LibGuide uh, main page, I'm going to click on Article tab. 
and I'm also going to get a sip of coffee here. Okay. Um, these databases here in the middle are databases that I would recommend people doing research and educational research and evaluation use. Um, I'm just going to click on the first one here, which is Eric. As you can see, it indexes approximately 900 journals from 1966 to present. Once you get in here, uh, a lot of our databases are provided by EBSCOhost, so the interface is going to look relatively similar to through each database, but each database covers different journals, so you really have to, and I'll just jump back here, you really have to search through all of these databases to do um, a thorough literature review. Otherwise, there may be 300, 400, 500 journals that are only covered in Education Research Complete, for example, that aren't covered in ERIC. Uh, okay, I'm going to back in ERIC now. I'm just going to do kind of a, a generic search uh, for articles that have to do with class size. Okay, so I type in class size, and I'm going to put an asterisk at the end of the Z. So it's I took off the E and replaced it with a shift eight asterisk. That'll give me class size, class sizes, class sizing, if that's a word, and search. And I got. 4,538 results that contain some form of the word class size. Over here on the left, I could limit to just peer-reviewed journals. I can limit by date, uh, different types of resources there. They do have subject headings, uh, which I'll go into a little bit more actually right now. One of the benefits of using Eric is that it has a thesaurus. Uh, and up at the top, if you click on thesaurus, you can actually do a search for class size and then browse. What this does is give you ideas for search terms other than the one you came up with. So class size, I click on it again. Now over here, I have class size, but I also have small classes, teacher-student ratio, crowding, classroom environment possibly, these are all terms that would work for me, but if I only search for class size, I only get the articles that deal with that specific term, even though an article about small classes would probably be uh, relevant to me. So I check everything that applies and select or, keep it at or, and add. So now it pushes that search up to the search box at the top. So I'll, I'll take any article that uses the term class size or crowding or teacher-student ratio or small classes and search. 3,216 results using those particular terms as subject headings. So it's narrowed down a little bit from the 4,500 that we used for multiple versions of the term class size but these should probably be a little bit more relevant. Uh, you'll notice over here on the right, we have this uh, search widget. If you are, if the building is open, which during the normal school year, so fall, uh, spring, fall, winter, and spring, uh, the second floor of the Alden Library is open 24 hours a day, five days a week, with extended hours on the weekends. So as long as someone's in the building, you can type your question into this box and someone should be able to get back to you almost immediately. Uh, so for example, if you found an article like this one right here and you couldn't find full text, you could just type in, could you help me? I'm looking for and copy paste this, drop it in there and they see what they could do. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down here, see if I can find a good example. In Eric, you have two different types of documents. You have an ED which is an ERIC document, and you have, see there's an ED, ED, looking for an EJ here to give you an example. I could also limit over to the left, but here we go, EJ. An ED is a document, so it's an unpublished work. It could be conference papers. It could be an academic paper of some sort that didn't appear in a journal. An EJ is an actual journal article, which has already been published. Uh, 
I'll just do this one here, student evaluation of instruction in the new paradigm of distance education. If I click on that title, it brings up the record. Here are more descriptors, those subject headings I was talking about. So there's class size, that's why it came up here. If this were an article I would I really like, I might want to write down some of these, like for example, academic achievement. Uh, what type, what, what in relation to class size are we talking about? Academic achievement, um, test scores, whatever. If this were something I wanted to read, I click on find it. In this case, full text is available in the EJC. Click on that, and there it is. And there's the full text. Um, if it weren't there, I could then look down to this box and see if we had it in paper. Uh, we have, it looks like 1981 to 1999 on the sixth floor, 73 to 86 in microfilm, and 1999 to 2003 at the annex. One thing I should probably point out at this point, um, if you are a distance learner, well, any student or faculty at OU can sign up for document delivery. So in this case, if this weren't available digitally and we only had it available in paper, all you would have to do is fill out a document delivery request and we would send someone upstairs to scan it for you and then send you the PDF. And in order to sign up for that document delivery service, you just go to the library homepage. Um, I'm looking here, go to services and borrowing, and then enter library loan and document express. Once you sign up for this, all you have to do is log in, and you should be able to request an article to be scanned for you. This is a very brief tutorial, and I only have a couple minutes left, so I'm not going to go into that right now, but if you do have questions about any of this, just send me an email, uh, G-U-D-E-R at ohio.edu. Um, okay, you can also add articles to your folder. So I really like that one, I like this one, I like this one. So once I've gone through and I like everything, I just scroll back up to the top of the page and my folder now has items in it. Click that, select all, and email to myself. I can put in my email address here, and if there are PDFs, uh, they will attach themselves. Uh, doesn't look like it's doing that in this, this particular instance, but I just email and I get the records, and I can have it cited in a specific format if I'd like. And that's that. Okay, I've uh, been talking for about 13 minutes. If you guys have any questions, once again, I will pull up my information here but please feel free to email me and we also have other tutorials available on the website which I think Dr. Holly has linked um, to to uh, to your blackboard I'm sorry I'm looking for my information here and just find me and open that up again okay so there's my contact information and please feel free to call me, and thank you very much, and have a good one. Bye.